My friends and I, we started a company and we did that company for about two and a half years. And after about two and a half years, we started looking at acquisition routes. One of the companies we were chatting with was Dropbox and uh, we were all really impressed with the, the talent and the people at Dropbox. And so we decided to interview here um, and we went through like the traditional interview loop. Dropbox traditionally started as a file sync and share company. And so what we were doing was we were taking everybody's files and keeping them in sync. And what ended up happening was a lot of our customers started bringing uh, Dropbox into the workplace and to get their work done. And these people became the most happy, like loyal customers and also our paying customers. So we not only realized we were just keeping files in sync, but we were kind of keeping teams in sync. And so we built this massive collaboration graph um, as a result of it. So we at Dropbox were like, let's double down on our productivity tools and our collaboration tools. Paper is basically, um, I kind of think of it as like the post files world one day. Um, files are very important to how people get work done. Uh, but as teenagers, as the new millennials kind of come on to the, the work world, um, they're going to look for tools that are kind of built from the ground up. So at Dropbox, we ask um, lots of technical questions. So we have an initial phone screen interview where you get asked uh, a coding question on the phone and you have a coder pad link and we um, ask you to type stuff um, and we're watching you go through the entire solution. So there's two of those types of interviews. If the, the person passes the interview, we bring them in. So you're basically like whiteboarding a bunch of uh, questions. But on top of that, we also ask questions um, around your past experience and uh, we do this interview called an all-around interview. Um, there we ask for examples of places where you kind of like focused on impact. Uh, um, what, what was it like working on a team together? Um, what were some projects that you failed at? Um, how have you owned certain projects? So we try to get to know you and how you kind of work as opposed just to the only technical part of it. And so that was like four or five interviews for that day and then after that a decision is made on whether you make it to the company or not. Well, everybody that interviews um, contributes to the discussion of whether uh, the candidate fits the bill for what we're kind of looking for, like the Dropbox hiring bar. Um, so it's okay if you don't do great in one interview, but um, everybody ends up calibrating together as a group and decides, hey, this person would be a great fit for Dropbox. And then that, usually, that meeting usually happens like the day after the interview. We have this uh, interview called the all around interview, and that is where we kind of try to really deep, get deep into the person's like past experience. So we'll ask questions like, you know, give us examples of um, where you didn't agree with somebody on a project that you're working with, but you still kind of like made it work or what did you do in those scenarios? Or give us an example of a failed project and like what did the person do um, when the project failed? Did they actually um, go back and fix things? Did they like take responsibility for it? Did they own it? So we, we try to get a sense of like them working in different scenarios in the past and how those kind of uh, scenarios will kind of like move forward. At Dropbox we use Python, we use uh, uh, TypeScript. Uh, for our mobile apps we use Objective-C and we've started using Swift as well. So a lot of the new stuff is actually being written in Swift. Uh, for Android we use Java. Um, we use like things like React as well for the front end. Um, and so Depending on the team that you're on, you'll be working on the particular language. But when it comes time for interviewing, we don't really ask for you to like know those languages. You can write the technical question that we ask you in any language you want. Um, so it, it's on to the interviewer to understand what you're writing in the language. And we don't really care about like the syntactical uh, part of it. Like everything doesn't have to be perfect in terms of the language, but that you get a general gist of like um, how you kind of go about like thinking about the solution. So I can't really say exactly the problems that we solve, but um, they're typically around algorithms, uh, data structures, things you kind of learn in school. Um, we ask you to like make trade-offs a lot, like around speed and memory. So um, just understanding, like knowing when, when to use like a breadth first search versus like a depth first search, uh, when to use recursion, when to use uh, dynamic programming. There's various different uh, types of problems, but these are concepts you kind of learn in school. There's a certain bar we expect technically, but if, let's say, for example, somebody's like a complete rock star developer, but they can't work with others or they come off very standoffish, uh, we will not hire them because they just don't make a good fit for the culture that we have here.